Before we jump into the subject of today's video, I thought I'd let you all know that Gab is back up and running again. Congratulations, Gab. Now, I have a Gab, I do use it, and I have linked it for you in the description if you at all want to go over there instead of using Twitter. Twitter has gotten so poisonous that I felt the need to distance myself to the point where I've turned all notifications off because it's actually starting to make me feel sick. It's probably not such a wise idea for me to then go on Twitter, take things I see on Twitter and turn it into a video like I did a few days ago. Hmm, lesson learned. But I did want to get my opinion across, even though I've been told apparently I'm wrong because reasons. Oh, and another thing I want to address before we start, there is a person that keeps appearing in the comments to my videos, telling me that I'm just a right winger, and then going off on reasons why I'm a right winger. To you, this comment is pretty much one of those two comments that's bothered me. I don't understand how calling someone a right winger is a pejorative. I also don't understand how me tackling an individual issue in the context of that particular video, tackling physical crime in favour of misogyny, is in any way a right wing issue. It is a law and order issue. There should be no politics in that. It is very simply tackling real crime over perceived crime that does not make me right wing. You read into it far too much and somehow managed to make it seem like my monotone delivery was indicative of a crisis or as if I was trying to fob off a crisis or perceived crisis. These words are directed at you. Shut the fuck up. Clearly, you're a moron. Now on to the subject of today's video, because this one's quite interesting. You see, I, like many people in this country, am pro-immigration. I know that sounds a bit weird, but in the context of my position, I'm pro-immigration provided it is controlled. If you bring something to this country that is of value to us, skills certainly qualify as something I consider to be a commodity for this country and therefore you are a benefit to us. Therefore, I, like many other people in this country, take no issue with you coming to the United Kingdom. I do take issue though, when you want to come to the country, not know the language, have any discernible skill set, and not be in any particular position where you are under threat. The refugee part, well, we can get onto that another time, not relevant to this particular discussion. Refugees are unique. Economic migrants, eh, touchy subject. We, like many other countries, have taken in a considerable number of people over the years, some of whom have been of huge benefit to us. For example, the Windrush generation, quite a large number of Polish people. Not the Romanians, though. They basically stole our welfare and built homes back home. Cunts. <laughs> That said, I'd probably do the same thing if I was skillless. Is that even a word? Probably not. And it doesn't really matter. The reason I bring this all up and focused on the skill-related element to those that come to the United Kingdom is because of this article from The Independent, where the title reads, UK needs migration because native Britons are bloody stupid, says pro-EU Lord. Now this is Lord Kerr. I'm sure many of you can come up with rather creative remarks for just how gormless this fool looks. He almost looks like he epitomises white male privilege, correction, white male privilege, and I can't help but feel his comment is a tad out of touch, or could be perceived to be out of touch, when you consider the vast number of students who are getting A stars at GCSE, those who are getting A's in A levels, and of course the vast number of people who have degrees, and of course advanced degrees. But I have a sneaky feeling he's using this as a way of remarking that we need more young people to outvote the older people, because as it's been noted certainly by the media and those that did studies into this, those with academic credits seem to be younger, and the older people seem to be less qualified. As you got older, they were even more less qualified even more or less, even less qualified. I'm going to stop trying to English because apparently I don't know how to anymore. Maybe I should just do the whole crisis thing, prick. So, a pro-EU peer said the UK needs immigration because native Britons are bloody stupid provoking a backlash from Eurosceptics and the right-wing press. Huh, maybe I am right-wing then since I'm covering this. No, I'm not. I'm far too qualified. I would make one clear point that is somewhat relevant to this and that is the majority of the left-wing press 
are Remain voters. Therefore, they are not going to cover this in any light that makes it seem as if he looks like a fool. That seems obvious enough. Lord Kerr of some place, who co-wrote Article 50, congratulations, said Britain needed an injection of intelligent people from outside, and claimed the Leave campaign won the referendum only by cleverly outsourcing xenophobia and racism. The Leave campaign didn't have to do any of that. There has been a long-standing problem with immigration in this country, going back decades. If you do not control it, the native population eventually, if they're not totally beta as fuck, will start to rebel because they will feel the government is not acting in the nation's best interests. You could argue those people who feel alienated are nationalist, which there is nothing wrong with being. Putting your country first is, after all, the job of government, and you would expect your government to put you as a priority above other people of other nations. Speaking at an event organised by the Institute for Government, Lord Kerr said, In my view, immigration is the thing that keeps this country running, what it had done in the past when we desperately needed new people. Thank you, Caribbean, by the way. You're very kind. We native Brits are so bloody stupid that we need an injection of intelligent people, young people, of course young people, from outside who come in and wake us up from time to time. Again, I'm not against immigration. If you bring something to this country, fantastic. But at the same time, we can't just welcome everyone here, even if they are all qualified beyond belief. There was this rather naive comment I remember seeing when Sargon of Akkad of all people was talking to people about immigration, and someone said, or he asked them, Sargon of Akkad did it, that is, he asked them if they believed all immigrants are a benefit to our country, and I believe they said yes, which I think most people can agree is not entirely true. We have now got enough proof that there are enough problems within communities, communities that have failed to integrate within British culture, to the point where their culture then dominates the then native culture, and we do nothing about it. It's quite sad, really. It's completely true that the Leave campaign, by cleverly outsourcing the xenophobia and the racism to the Farage campaign, were able to salve their consciences, it seems, by pinning Cameron to the fact that we would only take back control when we left. That was further cemented by the fact that when David Cameron tried to negotiate a reform within the EU, it fell apart. And on the subject of the EU, Theresa May, this is for you. Resign. If your plan, after many, many times in Prime Minister's questions saying that we would leave the customs union, is to keep us in the customs union, and unilaterally keep, I think, Northern Ireland in? Yeah. Resign. Anyway, but supposing we did stop all the immigration from the EU, we would not have met Mr Cameron's target. He would have done a lot of damage to the country if he had met it, but it was in his power to meet it by stopping immigration from outside the EU. Well, that was the problem. A lot of people were flooding into Germany because Germany opened the doors, and then somehow these people were being permitted to go to many other countries. The UK was right to be concerned that a lot of them would come to the UK. We have a population of 67 million. That is the third highest population in the European Union only behind France and Germany, and I can't help but notice we have far less land. Not that that truly matters to some, I guess. I'm not saying we're overpopulated either, so don't try and pull that one out on me, you fucking idiot. And yes, I'm aiming it solely at the person who keeps calling me a right-winger in a pejorative sense. So the premise of the argument about immigration was false. No, but it was one of the arguments that was brought up. It's just the one that many keep on latching onto, forgetting other elements of the EU that we truly believed were cancerous. And since we know it can't reform, we are right to still believe that this glorified pet project that was formerly a trade deal now trying to become a federalist government is nothing more than an authoritarian joke. In response to remarks, Eurosceptic Tory MP Peter Lilly walked out of the event and said he had considered reporting the peer to police for hate speech, lol, and being racially abusive of the British people. MP Peter Lilly, please don't do that. This just cements the belief of many that the peers are out of touch. Now granted, they do sit from a position almost aloof to others, but it does mean they are out of touch. It was not hate speech, because hate speech is bullshit. It was incorrect. And yes, he was being quite rude, 
about the British people by calling the native Brits stupid. That's fine. He can say that. Because then others can debunk him or correct him or make him look like a fool or use what he says as another one of the many excuses to want to abolish the House of Lords. And as you yourself said, I think these comments revealed the contempt that some Eurocrats like Lorca have for ordinary British people. They think they are there to rule the country and hugely resent any interference by the electorate. Stick to that and not the hate speech part, please. Anyway, if all goes well tonight, I will be doing a stream with Trups on the Cthulhu Kin and Friends show as a somewhat live coverage for a while, I think, of the midterm elections, where I have noticed many media outlets have covered this as inevitable win for the Blues, making Donald Trump a lame duck president who might well be impeached before the year's end. This should therefore be quite interesting. So I hope to see you all there, link in the description. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you all for listening.